<clears throat> all right once again welcome back everybody so in today's video we're gonna go ahead and um, we're gonna talk about two ways to go ahead and pick cruciform locks so before we get into this video and anything else I have made another video uh, I made it twice because once the light died um, and it didn't turn out too bright and both times I just remade it right before I started this one um, they're both about the same length like 15 14 minutes um, I picked the lock within under 30 seconds in each video so this video will come up after the video I already made obviously but in that video I'm gonna um, announce it just like I, I did in the previous video the winners have already been picked so I picked four of you guys randomly um, and today is Friday if I don't get the chance because I don't want to tie up make these I'm trying to make these videos a little shorter you know without cutting out knowledge um, so I'm working on it you know I'm trying to prepare and like think before I actually make the video but um the video even if I have to just submit, upload a video that's two three minutes just saying hey you know show you guys how I pick the winners whatever the case is and you know just let you guys know so if, if you're one of the 15 people who entered for one of the four brand new first watch padlocks which are clones of the American 1100 basically um, but six pin hacking, which is a bonus. Um, check back tomorrow, sometime. Hopefully in the morning it'll go up. Um, but it'll be up one way or another tomorrow. I already picked the winners. I just gotta make the video and announce it. That way I can get your addresses and get everything packed up and shipped out to you guys. Free your cause to you. Um, just thank you for the support. You know, I, I got <laughs> I got two more giveaways than I had already planned. So if you didn't win, you know. I promise you, you're, there's plenty of stuff. Plenty of stuff. I might run out of, you know, I might have more giveaways than subscribers at one point. But, hey. Anyway, so back to the video. Um, picking cruciform locks. So, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into this video. Um, if you don't know what a cruciform lock is, real quick, the breakdown on it. I have two of them here, and that's because one broke. One came with uh, the tool that we're going to use to pick it. And that's why I am going to title this video, How to Pick Cruciform Locks. Um, so I actually, yeah, we'll get into that in a second. So if you don't know what a cruciform lock is, it's basically a pin tumbler lock, right? Um, people get the, the idea that it is a more secure lock, and yeah, technically versus like a regular pin tumbler that's not security or anything, or really well made with tight tolerances, this is, um, you know, I guess you could say would be more secure, and that's because it's a pin tumbler. It uses the same same concept. Um, there's nothing different about it in that aspect. The only thing is instead of one shear line and one set of pins, you know, whether it's four, five, six, seven, um, it uses four shear lines that go all the way around. Hence, you know, the cross because the key has bidding on all four sides. Um, it's, it's called a cruciform lock. People call it cross because of the shape. Um, or Zeiss, Z-E-I-S-S. -S. I believe I'm saying that right. If I'm wrong, sorry, correct me. Um, and Zeiss, uh, I believe that name comes from a man, uh, you know, a manufacturer who who makes like a brand of this or something. You know, like they make a style or form a cruciform locks or whatever the case is. But those are the three common names um, that you'll see. Um, so two things about these: these can be picked more on the lower end there are very you know expensive higher end versions that probably have security pins or you know are just going to be like very hard to to pick um but the majority of these that you're going to see are going to be the cheap chinese uh versions that are made and i'm going to bet that at least 75 percent of them can be picked either with traditional picking method or with this tool that we're going to show you um and that's the two things we're going to talk about um so, another thing I want to point out, if you live in the United States, yes, these are not common. One, two, two ways that you may have come across them, you know, other countries, they, they're more common, padlocks, um, you know, house locks, like your door or whatever. But in the States, two, two things I read that they were common on, if you ever seen those locking bars people used to lock their steering wheels with, they're not that common nowadays. A lot of those uh, generally used uh, cruciform locks from what I read and some household safes you know I'm not sure which manufacturer but they actually use cruciform locks um, now on average cruciform locks have anywhere between 14 and 16 pins this one is just you know one of those 
clear acrylic versions and it's perfect for this video um, it has four 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 and two so that's a total of 14 pins um, now that's what the cruise pour and lock is um, let's go ahead and show you the key and then we'll show how it works and let's get into the picking so it's it's no it's really not that different you know uh, looks can be intimidating but every 90 degrees you know it, you know, there's a different set of bidding you know that corresponds to a different set of pins um, like I said some all locks are different they're not all gonna be like four 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 and two you know some may have three I've seen some that have five four you know the number is gonna be different depending on the lock and whoever manufactured the lock um, but for this one four 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 and two um, with a total of 14 pins so every 90 degrees you just get different bidding um, a lot of them actually will have like a red circle and then like a notch on the key indicating which way to put the key in because on this one I just kind of have to rotate it or you know put it in the lock because it won't go in because it's key different you know every set is different it's not like it's the same set of pins on in the same bidding on each side they're all different which is awesome um, but yeah when we open the lock see right now the lock would technically be open I'm not sure if in like a padlock, you know, you would have to turn it all the way or something. But in this instance, I put the key in and just turn it a little bit. And I could see the four key pins from, you know, the top. Um, if we keep going, you know, all the shear lines have been have been cleared. So I think that would cons to, uh, be considered an open on this one. Um, it's weird just because it's the acrylic version. So basically, there's two ways I know that work to get into these. And you're typically going to have luck. You know, you could try, you know all the ones you come across um, as I can find these online I'm definitely gonna do two things to them when I make a video I'm gonna pick them now that's one of two ways I'm gonna talk about you can get into you can pick it like a traditional pin tumbler lock um, light tension is one thing I've heard that works really well and you know obviously you will need like a small tension wrench a smaller tension wrench which you can make yourself or you know plenty of tension wrenches out there and windshield wipers different sizes um, and then you just go through and pick it like a traditional pin tumbler lock. That's it. You know, it's just a lot more pins. Um, you still got to go all the way around and get all the pins. You know, it's that's why it's, I'm not really worried about showing it because if you know you know how to pick a pin tumbler lock, then that's what you do to this. You apply the same method to it. You know, just don't be intimidated by the three other shear lines because you know get all the binding pins. It just whatever order they're in. Um, and the other reason I can't show you is because that's why I actually have two of these. The first one broke because I started to make a video on how to pick it. And as soon as I put a wee little bit of tension on here and I uh, started to go with my pick, these are all like clear little circles that hold the spring and pins in. And two of them popped up and hit me in my face from, you know, the top. And I was like, whoa. And I couldn't find the one spring and it was real tiny. And it's just not worth it. So when we get padlocks in the future, yes, I'm going to try and get an open by just picking it like a pin tumbler lock you know if they're really well made then yes they are definitely you know you could consider them a high security lock because they're they are going to be harder to get into especially with that many pins and if they have security pins or whoever manufactured them but for the purpose of this video we have another way to pick them and that's why i am going to title the video how to pick cruciform locks because i told you the one way and if you're dealing with these locks you know don't start out trying to pick these type of locks it's just you know just because there's a lot more pins learn how to pick a pin tumbler that has less pins because that's basically what this boils down to as being it's just a pin tumbler so um, there's a couple versions of this tool a lot of different Chinese manufacturers make them and they're all identical uh, I've seen the price on this set from this company which is Huck H-U-K um, it's Huck uh, lock pick uh, you could type in on Amazon or eBay, you know, Huck cross lock pick and, you know, a bunch of different results will come up, different manufacturers. Um, Huck seems to be, for the low end versions, they seem to be pretty good and I'm going to rate this a 10 out of 10 because I only paid 19 bucks. Um, these tools break a lot. I'm, I'm waiting for this one to break. I've already ordered another set and I ordered another set from a different manufacturer, even though it's probably probably the same manufacturer honestly I know it's a different manufacturer but I was being sarcastic but um you know they're, they're identical there's nothing different between the manufacturers you know um, the sizes are the same from what I've been seeing 
Now, I didn't think there was going to be a high-end version of this tool, and HPC has one for $131, and it looks, a, it's the same principle, it looks way nicer, um, and it can actually be used to pick three-way locks also, you can remove one of the prongs um, that are on these tools. So basically, um, I it took me a while to get this in because I hate international shipping, and it's hard to find these common in the states, even if you just do a Google search. You'll see a lot of the sites that tell them you know are overseas, but I found I finally found a seller on eBay who has them, and I've seen a couple in the past, but sometimes they went like forty-five dollars, and it's like, well, should I pay forty-five just to get it in a couple days in the states, or should I pay you know the cheap fifteen twenty dollar price and wait five weeks and it possibly come damaged from China? Anyway, so there's three tools. They all are the same. They're just different sizes because only one of these tools is gonna fit this lock. Um, so they come in three sizes out of all the, the cheap versions I've seen and there are 6.0, 6.5 and 7.0. Um, for this lock all we need is the 6.0 wherever that's at. It does come with a little allen wrench because there's little socket screws in here that you could take these tools apart and I don't know if it's to fix it, you know maybe adjust it. But um, like I said this was, there's two versions of this, $23 which included this which if I wanted to buy this, like when I had to buy it separate after I broke the first one, it was $10.99. Um, or the same seller sells this for, like I said, $19. Bucks. So for $4, you get the lock. Um, otherwise, it, it wouldn't make sense unless you have a, a Zeiss cruciform cross lock, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I cannot wait to get actual padlocks or mortise, whatever, just some type of cruciform lock to actually pick it because it looks like such a fun challenge. Um, like I showed you the key. It's just every size is just different bidding. Um, so let's talk about this tool, this lockpick tool. Um, this will work. I don't know if it'll work on the higher end versions, um, especially if there's security pins in it. I doubt it just because it's pretty much going to be the same principle as raking. Um, it's just a really nifty tool for it. <laughs> so let's break it down what this, what this tool does. Um, and they're actually not that... Uh, I thought this was going to be like plastic. It's, it's, it's like an aluminum. Um, and yes, this tool, um, like I said, I, it's bound to break. Um, that's why I want to try the HPC one, but for $131, it's like, is it worth it? Is it going to be better quality? Is it going to last longer? You know, yada, yada, yada. Is there a way if one of the prongs break to get replacements? Whatever the case is. So let's go ahead and show you this tool. So here, here is, uh, before I get all zoomed in, that is the tool in between my fingertips, okay? So let's start with the most important part. <laughs> Well, maybe not the most important part. So, if you look at the if you look at the tip of this, right? You know that there's four different sides to that lock. There's four different shear lines that we have to go ahead and, you know, uh, get picked. So, what this tool is is it pretty much looks like four half diamond picks. Um, you know, the tips pretty much look like half diamonds, which work great for the type of attack that we're going to do on this lock. So, there's four prongs. These will break very easily, so don't. You got to be careful when you use this tool. It does not take a lot of force or pressure, um, and don't just jam it in and out of the lock. The second part that we need to learn about this is right down here. These are the tensioning prongs. They fit in like how the key would. You know how the cross is made up on the face of the lock where we insert the key. Those fit into one of each of the sides of the cross, and that's what tensions the lock as we're doing our you know raking motion um, and then you get this part right here which just screws down so once it's actually in the lock you know there's gonna be a gap and then you can screw this down so you know say my fingers lock it looks like this now instead of this and I think it's to help prevent these prongs from coming out while you're pulling it back and forth because that's how the tool that's the motion of the tool and maybe from coming out or getting bent I'm not exactly sure um, because the instructions are all in Chinese <laughs> And then you have this wheel right here. This is our tensioning wheel. So if you look where it says huck and it'll tell you the size, it's a 6.0 like I said. That, once the, the tension prongs are in the lock, boom, that's how you tension it. And then you got your pullback handle, which, you know, once it's, every, once it's in the lock and you got a little bit of tension on it, you just go like that and the lock should open fairly quickly. Now for all the little, like I said, the cheap Chinese manufactured versions of this lock, this will probably get you into, I'd say, 
you've got a 7 out of 10 shot with the locks you're going to come across, like 70% chance. And I'm only saying that because I don't have any to, to go off of, but from what I've seen on other videos and, um, you know, just the, the realistic of it from my experience with cheap Chinese locks in general. Um, so that's what this tool does, and let's go ahead and show you, show you it in use. So we're going to go ahead and put it in the vise. So our lock is locked. Um, when it's open, it'll look like an X, um, and then I'll also be able to show you, you know, the key pins. But now you can see that they're back to where they need to be in the locked position. So basically, like I said, all we're gonna do. Let's see if we get nice and zoomed in here. So. You got your, the face of your lock, correct? You just put it in. Doesn't matter which way you can go in, as long as it can, it, it's going to go in like uh, the cross key itself would. Okay, so it goes in like, like so. Push it all the way to the back of the lock, and then you take your tension prongs and line them up. And that's how you're going to find out the size you need. Um, the 6.5, the prongs will not fit in there. That's how I know that they're not the right size. Um, the tension prongs have to fit in you know in each of the four corners of the cross that's how you'll be able to determine what size you'll need it's not based on the the picking prongs um you know that's not what determines it so i told you you'll see a little bit of color you can see a little bit of silver so we can go ahead and you know screw that down just a little bit it doesn't make anything tight like i said it just i think it just helps keep everything in a straighter line, you know, maybe gives you a less chance of damaging the tool. I'm not sure. If you know the actual reason, please let me know. And then we're just going to put a little bit of tension on it. And then we're going to pull back and forth and we'll have an open. So let's see if we can raise you guys up just a hair because I want you to see it all at once. Um, so if I was going to actually use the lot, you know, I'm not going to put tension on it, but you just you know, you would just pull back and forth and say, I can't do it. I don't want to break the lock. Um, Alright, we'll do it like this first. So, I'm going to go ahead and do it and get an open. Okay, the lock is open. Very quick. Um, so, the only way I can show you, there's two ways I can show you. We can go ahead and unscrew this. And... Why, oh, there it is. <laughs> I was like, why is it not coming out? So I told you, if if you get an open, it'll look like an X, because obviously your cylinder is rotated. I'm not sure if you can make that X out too good, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you the cylinder cylinder itself. But it's not a cross anymore. It's an X because our cylinder has been rotated, and I don't want to remove the tool while it's in the state. Um, I'm sure it'll come out, but I don't want to break it. And you can see your key pins right there. Um, and if I go around, if I just rotate this, you know, in my hand, you'll see the key pins from that that side, you know, that side. And I know there's a glare, excuse the glare. And then that's the side that only had two key pins. There it is. So key pins key pins all four sides have been compromised um so if you go ahead and just turn it to lock it back up and then pull your tool up that's as easy as it is to get into these cross locks um that's how you pick a cross lock um either pick it traditionally or use this tool if you plan on dealing with these tools or you're like me and you always want to have um you know like in case i ever really need to get into a lock i like to know how to get into every type of lock that i possibly am capable of getting into whether it's picking raking you won't see me rake locks on this channel but for the sake of being able to get into it in the you know if, in a real life situation yes you know i love rakes it's just they're not a skilled thing so that's why i don't do it that the, that would take the fun out of the hobby it's like a puzzle for me so anyway there's nothing else to show you on this. Um, that's it. That's the tool. Hawk lock pick tool. Other companies make them. Um, I think Doso, you know, Klom. I don't know. I know all the cheap Chinese type manufacturers make them. 
Thank you for watching. Giveaway will be up on Saturday. It is Friday. Um, if you like this video, please uh, subscribe. Got more giveaways. Um, I'm probably going to do one maybe in a week or a week and a half. Um, got great ideas planned. More videos I got to make. So um, thank you guys for all the continued support and can, you know, hope that everybody learned something in this video. Thanks for watching.